Hi, Achim from Inner Space Explorers. Today we talk about fear in diving. I made these two videos where Aaron is kind of interviewing me about the channel dive and after that I received quite a few mails and messages and started discussions with uh, a couple of my patrons about fear in diving in general. So there have been things from I'm afraid of diving at dry suit because I'm afraid of plopping to the surface, I'm afraid of overhead environments, I'm afraid of dark murky water and so on and so on and so on. And uh, the question in the end was always what do you recommend, what do you recommend how to fix that? The question number one is do you need to fix it? Generally speaking fear is a very very important feeling a very important emotion because this is what actually shows us that we reach the end of our comfort zone and uh, let's say discomfort zone begins and that is good because if we would not have that feeling and we would just rush into this discomfort zone this could lead to uh, like this like a down spiral from discomfort to panic at some point um, because the moment we are not in our comfort zone anymore we usually focus way more on our surroundings than on or on this on this discomfort feeling let's say or the surroundings that cause it than on the things that we should focus on like our SPG, our depth gauge, our partner, whatever. Um, so actually real hazards. I think I said that in another, in another video you have to divide between real fear so fear that is based on something substantial or on, on an unreal fear, let's say. Um, so if you are having a walk at night in the woods, at least in our era where there's no wild animals or anything, there's no real re reason to be afraid of. I mean, there's no bears or wolves or anything like that. And the chances of another crazy one creeping through the wood in complete darkness is relatively slim. So there's nothing to be afraid of. But most people will be afraid because the surrounding makes them feel uncomfortable. So that's a good example um, where you can extend your, um, your comfort zone. You can actually get used to that. You can stop, think, breathe, make yourself clear that there is no real danger, nothing that can or will harm you, and that you can continue. Whilst um, having a, a walk in a city, let's say, with a bad reputation in a bad quarter, where there's a lot of crime going on uh, alone at night is probably something where you should be afraid of because there is a good chance of running into whatever criminal gang that uh, is probably going to um, take your stuff, kill you, whatever. And uh, so it's probably not a good idea to, to go there and try to extend your comfort zone. And the same thing goes for diving. When you're swimming in your favorite query um, and the visibility is bad it's not anything that you have to be afraid of I mean you know the environment you know that there's no potential hazards like I don't know sunken barbed wire we have a nice query where there is actually barbed wire in it you would don't uh, want to dive there without visibility um, or any obstructions that you can swim into so being afraid of that murky dark water is something that's going on in your brain and it's absolutely um, good to get yourself into this situation over and over and over again and make slow, um, slow and small steps forward and progress into the situation and extend your, uh, your comfort zone. Um, when you're diving in an unknown era, let's say in deep water on a wreck that you have never been before and you suddenly run into a zero visibility scenario that could be potentially dangerous. There could be cables or sharp metal or whatever um, edges where you can hurt yourself, where you can cut your suit, where you can get entangled and um, where then all kind of problems come up from like getting entangled, 
running out of gas because of that, running into long deco that you don't have gas for, etc., etc., etc. So that's not a good idea to um, force yourself into this situation. So looking at, at these two scenarios, um, you obviously want to stay within reasonable limits. When I say you go into your query and you want to extend your comfort zone, you obviously want to have a proper dive partner with you. You don't want to do any weird experiments. And obviously when you realize this is really out of your comfort zone, you want to, want to stop it and, um, and bail out of the situation in a reasonable and calm manner. So not go in there till you can't stand it anymore and then bail out to the surface or something like that. So this goes for, for a lot of things. I, for example, have a student that had crappy dive education somewhere and always had issues with the dry suit. So the um, person went to the surface uncontrolled years ago in a, in a non-fitting dry suit and was always afraid of diving dry because there was always this thing in the head like, if I get air in my feet, it will turn me around and shoot me to the surface which obviously is nonsense. Um, generally speaking, if you have proper education. So, but even with proper education, there was always this thing and the person always looked uncomfortable diving a dry suit. So the only way of, of overcoming that is diving a dry suit again and again and again and again, but always with somebody that in, in case there is trouble can control the situation. So in the end, we fixed it and the person now is diving comfortably in a dry suit. But obviously, always diving wet and getting cold and avoiding that doesn't solve the issue. So summarizing it, is your fear something that is substantial because there is a real risk or is it something in your head? If it is just something in your head, find a proper dive partner, probably somebody that does not have the issue. Um, and expose yourself to this situation over and over and over again and try to go a little step further every single time to sort the issue. What if you can't? So there are certain things that you cannot fix as simple as that. Well, avoid it. Don't do it. I mean, this is a um, recreational activity. Um, it's something you want to do for fun. So if there's something that you have a real issue with, don't do it. I mean, if you don't like deep, dark water, don't dive deep, dark waters. If you don't like envir uh, overhead environments, well, don't dive overhead environments. Um, there's probably no reason to force yourself into that. And uh, another major thing when it comes to fear in diving, um, don't let group pressure force you into situations that you're not comfortable with. So that's one of the major things I see is there's a group of males, wannabe alpha males, and everybody's like, I'm the guy. And um, then suddenly there's one individual that doesn't feel comfortable, but is afraid of exposing this fear or this uncomfortable feeling to the group because, um, yeah, obvious reasons. Um, he doesn't want to be the weak link, so to speak. And that is stupid and super dangerous. So um, if you're if you're diving with a group like that and you and you um, have the feeling that there is group pressure, then uh, it's probably time to think about different dive bodies and um, or actually uh, openly talk about it. And then you'll see where it goes. I mean, if um, it's a group of real friends, they will accept it and understand it and help you. And if they are not, if they behave like the word, you know, um, then yeah, time for other friends, other dive buddies, whatever, because this is not what you want to be in, especially if the shit hits the fan. Um, yeah, last question <laughs> that came a couple of times, what are you afraid of? So what I am afraid of in diving, um, I'm not the biggest fan of super tight restrictions in zero vis. Um, and that's based on some bad experiences 
Uh, I mentioned this lake before was the barbed wire and in fact when I was a teenager, uh, 16, 17 or so, I actually got entangled in a roll of barbed wire um, and trying to get myself out of there and there was already bad visibility, the visibility went to zero and I couldn't read my SPGs anymore, I lost a bit track of time, cut my suit, cut myself and it took a long time to get out of this roll of barbed wire, it was the constant thing in my head that I most probably run out of air there and I was alone, so long, uh, long time ago and uh, that was super uncomfortable and that's something that obviously is uh, in the back of my head and so um, I've been in a couple of similar situations in wrecks, bad visibility, tight restrictions where you get stuck a little bit I mean nothing dramatic but more or less I mean yeah you squeeze yourself through somewhere and get stuck a little bit and that always keeps kicking back not in a very bad way um, but um, that's, I would say, is the thing in diving that I try to avoid most. Um, my biggest thing in diving is cold. I've been in so many super cold dives and I'm freezing so bad um, that cold water actually is my worst enemy in diving. Um, my hands are pretty, pretty bad. Um, froze them a couple of times actually at one point to a to a point where I was almost um, to a point where I, where they had to uh, take off uh, parts of the fingers which fortunately didn't happen but um, so yeah cold hands um, become a big issue for me very very soonish so yeah it was um, especially getting older I try to avoid real cold water or long exposures to cold water long deco dives in our lakes in winter or stuff like that. All right, I hope that um, answered all the questions and uh, shines a bit of light on the topic. If you have questions, comment, please leave them in the comment section. If you have um, more specific questions and want to discuss things in detail, have a look at the Patreon site. And other than that, stay safe in these um, crazy times and I hope you have the chance to go diving. Take care. See you next video. Bye-bye.